A family is searching for answers and closure nearly two years after a man was killed during a struggle with four undercover narcotics agents in Jefferson Parish. Keevan Robinson was being investigated as a suspected drug dealer. But did a troubled life mean a death sentence? Well, yeah. Paul Dudley digs into the documents to show us that Keevan's case, it isn't the first time these agents have been accused of excessive force. Um, he was a go-getter. Um, he was very charming. He was funny. He was very funny. The memories are still there. We, we had a lot of fun growing up. You know, we grew up more like brothers and sisters. <laughs> there was always me and King versus the Mahoney Keevan. The pictures remain too. Just looking at the pictures is heartbreaking. But Keevan Robinson is gone. Uh, May 10th, 2018 for me was it felt like someone just snatched my whole heart out of my body. That day, Robinson went to this shell station at Jefferson Highway in La Bar. Unmarked cars descend when he gets into his vehicle. The 22-year-old speeds off. About a block or so away, there's a crash. Robinson gets out of the car and runs as four men follow. The men we later learn are David Lowe, Jason Spadoni, Justin Brister, and Gary Bordelon undercover narcotics agents with the Jefferson Parish Sheriff's Office. Minutes later, Robinson would be dead. And I asked him to verify to make sure because he could be right. I told him, I told him that they had the wrong person. How can another human being go home to their family and sleep at night knowing they took another human being's life? JPSO documents say the agents were led to Keevan Robinson after he apparently sold an informant one gram of heroin. An incident report claims Robinson had an extensive criminal history, including past arrests for narcotics charges, weapons charges, and a list of other offenses. After Robinson took off running, the report says there was a severe struggle, and shortly after he was arrested, the agents learned Robinson stopped breathing and died. He wasn't armed. He's 130 pounds. Like, no, no, sir. There's no way to justify those actions. We have known the official cause of death since about a week after it happened. Our initial autopsy findings, and I'm going to be brief, okay, reveal uh, significant traumatic injuries to the neck. Jefferson Parish Coroner Jerry Satanovich says these findings are consistent with compressional asphyxia. That means someone squeezed Robinson's neck the death ruled a homicide. For nearly two years, the case has sat in the hands of the district attorney, as Paul Connick and others investigate if these four officers should be charged. The question is, were they acting within their duties when the death occurred, or was there criminal intent? What kind of evidence would the DA's office need to see in order for uh, these officers to be criminally charged? Mr. Connick may bring in an expert uh, on asphyxia to advise him on what the photos show, what the bruises show, if any, uh, to closely examine Dr. Satanovich's coroner's autopsy report, and how does that coincide with and match up against the statements given by the police officers immediately after the incident. All of the four Jefferson Parish narcotics agents implicated in Robinson's death have been defendants in civil rights lawsuits in the past, alleging excessive force in unrelated cases. From the paperwork that I have gathered, there is other African-American males that has been brutalized by these detectives. And, it's, and I mean, the paper doesn't lie. In most of the cases, judges sided with the deputies, but some cases are still yet to be decided. Gary Bordelon is named in a pending lawsuit, claiming he and other officers beat a man after he ran during a drug arrest in September 2017 in Metairie. The suit alleges the man was hit with a police vehicle. Once he was down, Bordelon and other officers kicked and beat him. Justin Brister, too, is named in another lawsuit, saying during an arrest in November 2017, deputies beat up another man while his arms were handcuffed behind his back and face down on the ground. These pictures were filed along with court records. Hester Hilliard is one of the lawyers representing the Robinson family. What if, as a result of these prior lawsuits, these officers would have been taken off the street? 
what if, as a result of these prior lawsuits, these officers would have been fired? Then Keevan may be alive. Dan Martini, representing the officers, responded by saying, if all you read are the lawsuits, in most cases you get the wrong idea as to what is actually happening, adding in both of these cases, the men were involved in, quote, drug activity, and in both cases, the men resisted. With the NAACP, Gaylor Spiller isn't buying it. You have a job to do, I respect that, I understand that. But there's a limit, there's a line you just don't cross. And in too many cases where detectives, that is Caucasians, uh, uh, just overstep their bounds. I mean, not all of them is bad. God knows I know all of them is not bad. Attorney Donovan Livacari has represented police officers in the past, but is not part of this case. He said officers should not be judged based on prior complaints, but by an objectively reasonable standard concerning use of force. We are looking at these things in, in, in terms of law enforcement officers being put in positions where they have to to face rapidly changing circumstances under tense situations. What would you like to see done? Justice, them put in jail. So we could get some kind of closure. They deserve to go to jail, and they should, and I hope that's, that's all I can do is pray and hope that that happens. What's it gonna feel like, though, if they get cleared? I mean, It will feel worse than me, ten, honestly, because that's what I'm holding on to to feel just a little bit okay. The Jefferson Parish Sheriff's Office, the Coroner's Office, the State Police, and the District Attorney's Office all said they were unable to comment on our story because of the ongoing investigation. There is still no word on when the DA's investigation will be complete. However, experts I've spoken to say while it has been a long time since Keevan Robinson's death, two years in May, there is really no metric for how long an investigation should take especially one as sensitive as this one. The Robinson family has two pending lawsuits against the officers involved who are still on desk duty. One of the attorneys representing the officers did tell me he believes the force that was used on Mr. Robinson was appropriate given the circumstances and his resistance.